everyone, it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part of the hashtag Team Tiny May 2023 hop and the theme is wedding or special occasion card. So we're going to be using a piece of 5x7 Bristol Smooth cardstock and some stamps from the ton. You can see here that I have this red rubber background stamp and I wanted to do a scene so we're using a couple different stamp sets to create this. I was just placing the images on the red rubber stamp and you can see they're actually backwards though so, because what I wanted to do was to have the ability because you can't see through the red stamp to try to figure out where everything needed to go. So I'm going to put them on top of the red rubber stamp with the cling side onto the red rubber stamp putting that into the misty, and then removing the red rubber stamp, picking up those images, stamping them down, and then I'm going to create masks for these images because then we are going to stamp the whole entire scene behind it. So because it's a red rubber stamp and obviously you can't see through those, this was a little bit difficult to do because I had to be really careful with where I was placing the background stamp. So I kind of lined it up a couple times, did the best that I could. It's definitely not perfect, but because I decided to do this instead of stamping out the background image and then stamping out the two, the bride and the groom onto a separate piece of paper and then cutting those out and putting them on the scene, this was the way that it worked out. So I think that it actually worked out fine. The chair in between the bride and the groom does not exactly stamp out perfectly, but in the end, it's not even going to matter. So before I started to color these in with Copic markers, I did cut it down a little bit. So I had a start off with a five by seven piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock and cut it down to four and a half by six and a half. So that way I would be able to frame it with a, another piece of cardstock. And then there would also be a black frame because I knew I wanted this to go onto a black card base. Um, I normally don't do five by sevens. So this was uh, a little bit more of a challenge for me. Had to think about the sizes of the mats and everything that I needed rather than uh, doing a typical A2 size card that I normally do. So I'm going in with some Copic markers and coloring in the railing. That's where I decided to start off. I wanted it to be like a black wrought iron railing. So I'm using some C markers. I use C10 and C5. I think I also used uh, C3. And I'm just going through and coloring in the entire staircase. So I did leave a lot of the coloring in here because I this was a very color intensive project. I, if I had to do this over again, I would not have used Bristol Smooth cardstock. I thought for some reason the Copic markers worked really well on this. Unless this actually is not Bristol Smooth cardstock, uh, I did not pull it from the actual paper pack. I pulled it from my scrap pile. So it is very possible it is not Bristol Smooth cardstock. It did bleed a little bit. So if you guys know if if Copic markers will bleed outside of the lines on Bristol, let me know down in the comments below because maybe this is what it is and then I just won't use that again. Um, but next time I will be, you know, pulling it from the actual pack of paper rather than just pulling it out of my pile and guessing as to what kind of paper it is. So I did go over the railing in a light gray, but then I decided that I didn't like that and wanted to go over it with that C10 marker. So it's actually kind of gave it a little bit of a cool effect because the lighter gray marker, I had a heavier hand, so the lines were thicker. So you have a little bit of a shadow behind that as well. So now I'm going to color in the groom's suit. So I wanted him to have a gray suit. I'm using, again, C markers. I used C3, C1, and C0, I believe. Um, so just coloring those in. My C1 was a little bit dry. And again, I don't know if it was, if it, it's getting dry or if it's just against that paper. It just wasn't, I didn't feel like it was blending as well. It does look better on camera than it did in person. And maybe this is just me thinking when I color. Cause I always, I, I know that everybody always says, 
it looks worse in the beginning and it'll get better. But I kind of get frustrated with that. And I don't, you know, if you guys do too, um, you're not alone. But I tend to get frustrated because when I put the colors down, I think they don't blend right. And then, so sometimes I just have to walk, you know, color it and then walk away, do another section and come back to it because I kind of need to let the colors blend for a little bit. Let me know if you guys also have that same issue or I'm just weird and uh, <laughs> it's just my, you know, my insecurities with coloring because I'm practicing to get better at Copac markers, but I'm not great at it. So while I'm coloring in this suit, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Team Tiny. So Team Tiny is a Facebook group and we are crafters that have less than a thousand subscribers. We are actively looking to grow our YouTube channels and we do this by participating in a hop every month. We have a different theme and it helps you challenge yourself, grow in your creativity, and it's also really fun to watch and see what everybody else makes and how they interpret the theme. Like I said, for this month, the theme is wedding or special occasion, and we're going into prom season, graduations from college, high school, um, trade schools, things like that. Uh, we also have communions, confirmations that are happening. So there's a lot on also wedding season. It's getting ready to be summer and that is a huge season for weddings. So there are a lot of special occasions that are coming up and I can't wait to see the direction that everybody takes this in. If you guys are small content creators, which are, you know, you have YouTube that has less than a thousand subscribers and you'd like to participate, please go into the more information section below the video description and the link to the Facebook group will be in there. You have to answer a couple questions and then you can be part of the group and participate in the hops. Once you get to a thousand subscribers, you do graduate from Team Tiny. We've had a lot of graduates that have grown their channel on, you know, from a lot of these hops. So if you're interested in it, please check it out. Um, and this is hashtag driven, so you want to make sure that you click on the hashtag in the title of the video and it'll bring up everybody who has participated in this hops videos. So um, thank you guys so much for watching the Team Tiny videos. We really appreciate the support, the likes, the comments, and if you find some new channels that you love, make sure that you subscribe and you know leave comments to everybody because we do take a lot of time to pump out this content for and you know challenge ourselves so we love to hear feedback from you guys so all right let's get back to the card now that I've colored in the groom um and while I was doing this I was thinking about when I was talking about the special occasions this would actually make like a really cute prom card too you don't have to make the dress be a wedding dress and you don't have to make that guy be a groom um so I just think that it would be really cute as a prom card too but I didn't think of that when I went ahead and made this card. So I am going to be using BV markers to go ahead and add some shading to her dress because it is a white dress since it is, well, I'm, I'm saying it's a wedding dress, so it is would be white, but there would still be some shadows to it. So I wanted to give it a little bit of um, purple. So I decided to go with really light BV colors and I believe I use BV 000 bv 0000 which i didn't even know they made quad what's a quadruple zeros um but <laughs> there were a lot of zeros in that one and you know i just think that it added just a little bit of shading to it so you saw me color in the hair and i think i colored in the skin tones off camera and now I'm going to get ready to color in the wall color. And this is the point of the card where I had gone too far and I wasn't really loving it. I had outlined some of it and then when I went to use the next color, I did not love the way that it was coming out. But I'm also kind of too stubborn that I've come this far that I wasn't going to throw it out. So you guys are going to have to let me know, did I save this background? Because, and it's okay, if you guys don't think that I did save it, feel free to let me know that too. Um, I'm not 100% in love with the background of the card I think everything else came out okay but these walls I'm really not sure about because at one point I decided to 
outline the card the side of the card and you'll see it i think i left this in here but i went where i'm coloring in a horizontal direction i went vertical and i think when i did that i created a line obviously in the other direction for the lines that i was coloring in and it was really really hard to get rid of it so note to self don't do that color always in the same direction and i know to do that i don't know why i why i decided to do that like there we go i just did it there why i decided to do that who knows um sometimes when i start to color i feel like i lose all you know like i, I know the principles of, of how to color in and you know use copic markers and then when i go to color in something just takes over and i feel like i forget everything so i'm just going in with a couple colors of those bv markers again and just coloring in all of the background i will color in underneath the chandelier i actually do go back and color in between all those spindles i actually just color right over all of them on the railing because obviously you would see the wall through the back of it and I'm just going to go ahead and fill them in I keep going back and forth between all of the BV colors until I'm and like I said I'm not really really happy with the outcome of it but I just blend the colors back and forth until I was happier with the way that it looked and again I think that I I tried as hard as I could to get that streak out and you can especially see on the left hand side I think you can see it on the right hand side as well um, but it was a little bit more difficult to blend that one out because this paper was not really lending itself to blending very well for the arch behind the groom, I decided to use a little bit of darker BV colors. It was BV02 and I think BV01 is are the colors that I used for that. I wanted it to be a little bit of an accent, but I didn't want to really introduce another new color. Um, I did go ahead and introduce some blues for that chair. I was just trying to figure out a color that would go well with the purple, but wouldn't isn't more purple. I didn't want it to be overwhelmingly purple um, and I also chose to do the bride's hair in yellow because yellow and purple are complementary colors and I thought that would look nice together and then blue and purple go very nicely together um, I wasn't in love with the legs for the chairs that I did so I kind of went back in and, and added a little bit more of the brown to soften it a little bit you can see there I'm going in and putting some shadows underneath all of the images because I decided not to color in the floor. I was going to do a wood floor, but I thought that would look a little bit too heavy. I already had a lot of coloring at the top and I thought that I would leave it as plain as possible. So here you can see I'm going back in and coloring in the wall, trying to blend it out a little bit more. And now I'm going in with a Spectrum Noir sparkle pen and adding glitter to the dress because again, wedding cards always need a little bit of glitter so going back and adding that glitter in there and then i'm also going in and using the lawn fawn sparkle i think it's sparkle pen glitter pen something like that and adding the glitter to where the folds in her dress are if i did this over again i don't think that i would use this i'm having a really hard time getting the product out and getting it to flow pretty evenly um, I think Nouveau Drops are a lot easier to use than this pen. I was really surprised. I do have some dexterity issues with my hands. Um, so it was really, really difficult for me to squeeze out. And it's not even like it's empty. I haven't really even used that much of it. So I was having a hard time controlling how much was coming out. And now because I'm impatient, I am going to go ahead and glue this together while the top piece is still wet. And for some reason, I put glue on or tape on top of the piece of paper and then on top of the card instead of putting it on the back of that reflective paper. I don't know what I was thinking. So I glued the reflective paper then down to the card base and then glued the wet uh, piece that we just colored in on top of that and let that dry and that's the card for today i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope that you guys will click on the hashtag and hop along with us if you guys have any comments or questions leave them below and i'll see you again real soon for another video bye